guys, February 21st of Reading Through Your Bible Chronologically in One Year. We are going over Leviticus 14, 33 through chapter 16. Okay, so we saw more conditions of the Israelites being considered ceremonially unclean. That was in chapter 14 and 15. It had to do with bodily discharge and things like that. And, you know, as I was reading it, I thought, I just... You know, what does that really mean to be unclean? And as I did some research, it, it seems to me you had to be considered clean to approach God. And so to be whole, to be cleansed, to be like W-H-O-L-E, whole, without blemish or holy, H-O-L-Y, that's how you had to be uh, to enter into his presence. So if there was something that was lacking in you, or if there was something that was making you not whole, then that would make you considered ceremonially unclean. And so it wasn't always the fact, you know, or the, the matter wasn't always that you were being sinful, although sometimes you were. It was really more about being lacking in an area. So these are, you know, the things that had to happen if they were considered ceremonially unclean from, from these types of things. And again, you know, it was always, to me, I just saw them like looking, I don't know if this is what they did, but it felt like they could be looking around and being like, well, don't touch her and don't touch that and don't go over there. Just this hyper vigilance. And I was, I just said, God, thank you because I'm hyper vigilant enough. I don't need all these rules and laws to follow to make me, I would be a basket case. I mean, Nobody would like me. I'd be a mess if this were me. And so it's just, God, thank you that we have freedom to just be still. If that's what that whole Psalm 4610 is, is be still and know that I am God. Like we don't have to be like, uh, 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 uh. let me make sure I follow all the rules. We have grace and we can just be still and know that God is God and that he has taken care of all of this for us and we are free to rest and live in his grace. Love that. And then chapter 16, we see the Day of Atonement, which happened once a year. And we see it's it's God, or tell, God telling Aaron and then Aaron entering into all these offerings to make atonement for himself and for the community. And so we see the first thing he does is he offers a, sac, or a sin offering for himself and for his family. Then immediately after that, he takes incense into the most holy place. And then after that, he offers a sin offering for the people. So the first goat, remember the people would bring three, two goats, and the first goat would be for the people, their sin offering for the people. And then he would take that blood and cleanse the tabernacle, cleanse the most holy place, cleanse the altar, the um, atonement cover. All of that was cleansed from the Israelites' sin or the Israelites' uncleanliness. And then... Uh, after that, there would be the live goat or the scapegoat that would uh, they would ceremonially place their hands on and the goat would be sent out into the wilderness as a symbol of your sin is being taken far away. And then the burnt offerings came after that, one for uh, Aaron and one for the Israelites as a whole, the nation. And so this happened once a year, complete dedication and atonement for their sins. And as... Um, as I was thinking about this, you know, you're thinking about this through New Testament eyes. So I wanted to read a, a few New Testament verses for you. So Mark 7, 15 through 23 says, this is Jesus speaking. And he says, there is nothing outside of a person that is, uh, that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? Do you not uh, see? I need my glasses, sorry. No, I don't see. Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Uh, thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, and then he goes on to say, you know, to list a bunch of sins. And so Jesus is saying, all this stuff that's going on in the law, that's really not the stuff that makes you unclean. What makes you unclean is what's going on in your heart. And then in 1 John 1, 7, he says, but if we walk in the light, 
as he is, and actually this is Paul speaking, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, Jesus, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin, cleansed from all sin, everything we've done in the past, everything that we're doing right now, and everything in the future. Once we accept the payment of Christ, we are cleansed from all sin. And John 13, 6 through 11 says, this is, I love this. 6 through 11. He came to Simon Peter, Jesus, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. So this is when he's washing their feet. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Like, okay, then wash everything. And Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet but is completely clean. And so we're not just, you know, kind of cleaned up. We're completely pure, completely clean because of the blood of Christ. And then John 15, one through six says, I am the tree vine, this is Jesus speaking, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in, uh, in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean, already you're clean. Because of the word that I have spoken to you, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, uh, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So our job is not to get ourselves cleaned up. That's not our job. We're already clean. Jesus just said that. Now our job is to abide in Christ. And what that means is we rest in the things that he has said. We live our lives for him. We believe what he says about us. And we, when we do that, when we are constantly submitting our lives to Christ, the fruit of the Spirit starts to come out of us. We, we are more joyful, faithful, uh, loving, love, joy, peace. Peaceful, patience, kindness, all those things start to well up in us because we are abiding, not because we're trying harder, okay? We have to abide in Christ and that stuff starts to come out of it. So my question for you today, as you start to go through your day, is I want you to ask yourself, am I striving or am I abiding? Go with that today. We want to abide in Christ. Let him do the work in us. Okay, tomorrow, February 22nd, is Leviticus 17 through 19. I will talk to you tomorrow. Uh, Bye-bye.